All right, ready to go. We'll start again. This is the regular meeting of the Board of Estimate and Apportionment and the presentation of the FY 2017 Annual Operating Plan. Today is Wednesday, April 20th, 2016. Madam Secretary, will you please call the roll? Mayor Slade. Present. Comptroller Green. Here. President Lee. Here. Items presented for the first time. Item number one, request from the Comptroller's Office for approval of contracts and leases for various city departments as listed on Exhibit A. Item two, request from the Comptroller's Office for approval of intra-departmental and inter-departmental transfers from various city departments as listed on Exhibit B. Item three, request from the Comptroller's Office for approval of transfers between projects for capital improvement funds listed on Exhibit C. Item four, request from the, Deputy, from the Director of Operations Mayor's Office for approval to pay membership dues to the National League of Cities for the period February 1st, 2016 through January 31st, 2017 in the amount of $16,192. Item five, request from the Director of Airports for approval of a resolution that authorizes the Director of Airports to enter into and execute the airport operating agreement and terminal building space permit and when indicated the cargo addendum with the airlines listed on Exhibit A. Item six, request from the Director of Airports for approval of a board bill, number unknown, and accompanying attachments. This ordinance authorizes the Director of Airports and the Controller to enter, enter into and execute the airport use and lease agreement and when indicated the cargo addendum with the airlines listed on Exhibit A. Okay, that is the extent of the items presented on the first uh, for the first time. When we finish with those, we will move into the next part of the agenda, which is the FY 2017 Annual Operating Plan. So, um, at this time, uh, do we have any uh, additions, corrections, or deletions? Uh, hearing none, I will entertain a motion for approval of the items one through six. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Items one through six have been unanimously approved. Thank you. Now we will move into the FY uh, 2017 Annual Operating Plan, which will be presented F, uh, by Paul Payne, the Budget Director. Paul? Thank you, Mayor. Yours. yours. Thank you. Um, presentation. If anybody wants one, we have up on the corner here. Okay. Okay. No. All right. Um, I'm, I'm going to be working off the uh, presentation just handed out. On, on the second slide of that presentation, the total proposed annual operating plan for 2017 is $1,042 million. That's an increase of 2.5% over the previous fiscal year. And you, as you can see on that first page, it uh, illustrates the, the basic breakdown among the funds. The general fund, which is almost half of the budget, is at $510.7 million for a 3.7% increase. Of course, that's a little skewed, and I'll be talking about this later. The 27th pay, uh, which, uh, which occurs about every 11 years, uh, is, is also in that budget. And it, uh, if you take that out, it's about 1.6% increase. And the special uh, revenue category, it's somewhat flat. It's, only, it's actually a little down of 0.3%. Uh, there, there's a mixture of increases and decreases among the special revenues. USTAC fund is down. Some of the special uh, 1116 fund revenues are down. Meanwhile, the public safety sales tax is an increase of 1.3 million, and CMT fund is up by 1.2 million as well. Under the grant fund categories, at $56.8 million, that's down 3.4%. Most of that decline is in the police department grants. They're down about 3.1 million, including asset forfeiture, which is uh, about 600,000 this year, about half of what it was last year. The debt service fund, that is the, our, our fund for paying off the uh, general obligation bond issues, uh, bond issues uh, amounts that are outstanding. That's a 4.4 million, that's about an 8.3% decrease. That does not reflect yet the, uh, the new issue which we would be anticipating, the $25 uh, million. So that, if that comes before, if we, before we finish the budget process, we could amend that. Otherwise, it'll be just be a separate ordinance whenever that uh, process takes place. Uh, the capital improvement funds uh, at $42.3 million. That's down 3.4% or about $1.5 million. 
Uh, that the sales tax funds are, uh, does show an increase this year, and but they do have smaller beginning fund balances as well, resulting in some of the reductions there. Enterprise funds, uh, 226 million of the total is 0.2 percent increase, so it's they're pretty flat. Water is actually down 1.1 million, airports up 1.6 million. The big increase you see in the internal service funds, that's $75.8 million, that's a 17% increase. The internal service funds are basically used for costs from other departments that pay, pay uh, mostly insurance premiums and things like that. Uh, not all of the, the insurance premiums from the police department were included in that fund last year, but that's just the mechanism used. But, that's, but it's an internal service fund, and uh, by including all of the insurance payments from the police department in that fund, it, it shows an increase. So overall, it's up by 2.5%, uh, and you can see that the general fund is just slightly under half of that total. Updating where we are, how we're doing this year, um, uh, in FY16, most of our major tax revenues are showing some continued growth through the third quarter, although we've seen some declines in some of the other ones, that, uh, other revenues, as well as some of the departmental receipts, which are sort of lagging uh, or dragging our, our, our growth back a bit. Under the earnings tax, uh, we're up year-to-date 4.2%, which is exceeding budget estimates. Uh, and surprisingly, the individual and the business portions are up 4.2 and 4.4% respectively. So it's, it's, it's evenly divided between those two. Um, our long-term growth rate's between 2.3 and 2.7%. So we're exceeding that right, right now. Payroll tax, which had a stronger uh, uh, performance in the previous fiscal year, year-to-date is up 2.2%. It's not the same base. Uh, as the earnings tax, as you know, because not profits, not for profits, are exempt from the payroll tax. So, uh, it, it, sometimes that growth varies from the, uh, the earnings tax, but it is also slightly uh, outperforming estimates. The sales tax uh, was an interesting uh, uh, revenue source last year. It was up over nine percent, which is a very strong year last year. Coming into this year, I expected it to pull back, similar to what we had in FY12. Uh, where we had a decline in the following year. So uh, that was what was budgeted. It actually is up slightly, 0.6% through the third quarter. Um, and it, it is, it, its uh, long-term growth rate is still below 2%. <coughs> on the next slide, uh, I know there's, there's a lot of numbers on here, but I wanted to... Do we have extra copies of anybody? Um, I'll share. Yeah. Yeah. And all of this information will be posted online once uh, after today's meeting. This is a sort of compressed version of all the ups and downs in uh, the proposed budget, and I'll get into some detail in the uh, later pages. But if you take uh, our general revenue base of $492.6 million, we're slightly exceeding that projection-wise, maybe about by a million two, so a little coming a little higher than that. Uh, if you assume eight, uh, net growth, underlying growth of 2%, that would produ produce about $9.8 million on that base. Now we are taking some hits next year, the, the Rams uh, relocation being one of them. Uh, that hits us in the sales tax as well as in the amusement tax primarily. Uh, so I've got a negative adjustment there of $3 million in general fund fee portion. And then the 27th pay reserve of $10.1 million. Now the 27th pay is not a hit on the budget, that's something we've been contributing to over the last decade and something we plan on every 11 years, so that's something that we, it's just going to be utilized next year. So that leaves you with an uh, estimated revenue base of $510.7 million. Now this year's budget was 492.6, and what you see below is where the increases uh, fall by pretty much by department. At least uh, salary increases over time, 27th pay, that's about $7.2 million. Fire salary increases and pension increases, uh, and we'll talk about pension uh, a little later. Uh, as well as 27th pay, that's about 6.6 .6 million. And then the non-uniform pay, including the benefit increases in 27th pay, is about 5.7. Some of our least debt obligations, including the, include the convention center asset preservation cost, uh, the NGA debt uh, relocation of about a million and a half, uh, and then we had some uh, refinancing savings from the Carnahan Courthouse. That, so you take those three together, that's about a half million dollar increase. And then the Justice Center lease, which is a fixed dollar amount, that's the balancing act between the general fund and the capital revenue, so that was being offset by capital revenue by $2.7 million. And if you can look down the, the list further, you can see unemployment comp, assessor subsidy, net increase of $200,000, workers comp, uh, which is a big cost, uh, it went up by about a million dollars, excluding police and fire. 
Uh, parks pretty much the same uh, status quo. Judicial offices, uh, we're talking about that a little bit more. The public administrator and drug court increases, less some other reductions of about $100,000 net. The big increase in the county offices uh, would be about $900,000 for the four scheduled elections we have next year. Um, other public safety, uh, we have some salary savings and some tra contractual service reductions at the um, corrections for about $600,000. And equipment services division, uh, they're going to have a consolidation of their garage unit and a new, new facility, centralized facility, uh, which will move their North Refuse garage and their fire um, uh, repair operation, fire equipment repair operation, and that'll be a net increase of about $400,000 for them. Uh, we do have the benefit of some reduced fuel costs of about $600,000, not including police and fire on that one, uh, which benefit uh, the balance as well. <coughs> So all those increases are about $18 million net, and which brings you to the $510.7 million figure. The next slide, uh, you for a discussion about payroll costs and, 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 and such, uh, and payroll related costs. It's about 75% of your general fund budget. Of course, I mentioned the $10.1 million for the 27th pay. And again, that's a by this is a bi-weekly pay schedule. 4.5 million for increase in police department personnel costs. That includes a proposed pay matrix, in, pay matrix increases of 2,000 plus this, their steps at $3.4 million, a $1.9 million increase in their overtime costs, and a slight increase in their retirement uh, uh, cost. There, the uniform strength is, remains uh, pretty flat at 1,292. That's an increase of about five uh, associated with the uh, grant expiration. The fire department is $5.3 million increase, uh, which they also would be getting that same proposed $2,000 plus pay matrix. Uh, uh, Overtime is up slightly. Uh, Non-uniform pay uh, is up about $200,000. The biggest increase with fire is going to be on the pension side, uh, which is going to be up about $4.4 million, of which 3.9 is in the general fund. And that's $1.7 million increase to the fire retirement plan. That's the new plan. Uh, and $2.7 million uh, increase to the fire retirement system uh, following an experience study uh, uh, adjustments for those, for those plans. Uh, and the, the number of uh, uniform strength of the fire department remains the same, assumed at 587, and then it assumes 20 is, is, would be uh, continued in a new SAFER grant. We had the old SAFER grant, which expired uh, just recently, and there, there is the, the proposed for the new SAFER grant of 20. A $1.4 million net increase in non-uniform costs. Uh, that includes the full year cost of the 1.5% merit from this current fiscal year uh, at $2 million plus a couple hundred thousand dollars for health insurance. Health insurance was only up by about 0.9%, so, so under 1% increase there. But we do see a big increase in uh, about a million dollars in workers' comp costs. Now, on offsetting these increases were a reduction in the uh, general fund ERS costs of about $1.8 million. And as in previous years, uh, next year's merit increase would, based on the ma their matrix, which was established last year, would be about 1.5%. It's anniversary based. We don't budget it in there. And we, in each department's budget, they just sort of absorb those increases with the salary savings. Following page, some highlights of various government uh, sections of government, general government and finance, down about a net $100,000. And you can see some of the miscellaneous changes, some salary savings, the Board of Aldermen, city councilors uh, got a position for collections, offset by some revenue. Controllers up a net 1.5 position, though with lower salaries overall. And there's a couple uh, vacant positions were cut at Muni Garage and Microphone. Citywide accounts, that's the non-departmental accounts, which are not department specific. There's a lot actually going on in that category. The convention center asset preservation costs of about $700,000. We've got the NGA debt uh, service obligations. This will be our first year payments on that uh, obligation of $1.5 million. The Carnahan debt savings of about $1.6 million. And then uh, the justice center, which is offset with capital. In addition to that, the assessor subsidy is up about 300000 and unemployment comp is down by 100000 And then we got a minor reduction in our interest costs for our tax revenue anticipation. Number. In the Parks Department, uh, that's pretty much a status quo budget. There were some overall savings there, I believe, in the salary side. We did add uh, some funds for the, the lifeguard costs at the Marquette pool, which were not included last year. But otherwise, it's a status quo pretty much budget. 
uh, judicial offices that in, their uh, net reduction of a million of a, of a hundred thousand dollars or so, but that includes for the first time a public uh, subsidy to the public administrator, uh, which will become an appointed position beginning on July or January first of two thousand seventeen, and that subsidy is about one hundred fifteen thousand um, uh, dollars. The, the remainder, remaining part of their office will be in a special fund, which will continue to receive funds generated by that office. So. For the, the cost will be split between general fund and that special fund. Drug, this, uh, also, this budget also assumes the full drug court will be subsidized in the general fund. That's a $300,000 increase. Prior years have been split between the crime prevention fund and the uh, general fund. And meanwhile, there, uh, the sheriff has five, uh, positions, uh, five positions cut from their budget uh, by the courts, and the city court uh, is down about four positions. In the county offices, as I mentioned earlier, the big cre increase there is in election board costs. It's up about $900,000 for the four scheduled elections. Other county offices have a net uh, reduction of about $100,000. Department of Streets, uh, net reduction of about $200,000. Uh, Tony's got a, a net ad addition of a position as they're moving some uh, positions, uh, clerical positions uh, to address phone calls at the system so they can uh, put more people on the street for towing, uh, which sounded like a pretty good idea when they were proposing it. Uh, salt division, salt, uh, the street division, uh, their salt increase is about 40,000. It's pretty much what we had last year. Uh, they did not use that much this year, so we believe we can get by with that amount. Rep uses down four vacant positions, and we'll see an additional five uh, eliminated in about six months due to the garage consolidation. So there, there are some position, positions funded in there for six months, uh, and you'll see that in their table of organization. Public safety uh, has some uh, increases and decreases. Director's office includes some salary savings as well. Um, and then the Civilian Oversight Board, you'll see there's no change there, but you'll see that it's moved to its own uh, budget unit. So you'll, it's got a distinct budget number as opposed to being included in the director's office. Building division's got a reduction of two vacant positions, and corrections uh, reduction, that's about 100,000, and corrections um, yeah. is up a position, but it has some reduction in uh, contractual costs uh, due to a declining census. It's about $400,000. Meanwhile, the police supplies are up about $300,000, and there's a, an addition of about of, of five proposed uh, park ranger positions for about $300,000. So in that category, uh, other than the personnel costs we talked about earlier, it sort of balances out. Those increases. Board of Public Service, uh, other than the facility accounts being down to about 100,000, the biggest change there is increase related to the garage consolidation, the ESD. Again, refuse and fire garage will be consolidating. Uh, and so their labor and supply costs are about a million dollars. However, the metro contract line is down about $700,000. And there's also a $200,000 increase for ESD police unit uh, at, M at ESD. And overall, uh, on fuel reduction, if you, including police and fire, that was about one and a half million dollars. So all those ups and downs result in about a two point eight million dollar decrease. On the next page, um, special fund revenue categories. This sort of highlights some of the interplay between the special funds, which offset some of our general fund costs, and vice versa. They go up and down uh, depending on how revenues. Uh, come in during the year. Public safety sales tax, given that, that it's exceeding uh, budget this year, uh, $1.6 million is being allocated. Uh, that was an increase there. Uh, the excess use tax, however, was actually down. We had a, a fund balance this year of about $1.2 million, and so that will actually decline with the sale, uh, use tax being down this year. Gaining fund also down by about $100,000, and the public safety trust, that's the, the increase in the, in the graduated business license fee that, uh, for public safety, that, that's up by about 100000 So those changes uh, offset general fund costs about $400,000. In the fund reallocations category, uh, in the capital sales, in the half cent sales tax for capital, there's a $1.4 million uh, reallocation of ward account funds. That gives them, the ward accounts, 85% of their normal allocation. If you recall, in prior years, uh, last year was, we did the full allocation after a number of years of uh, reallocating funds. Uh, they, were prior, they previously were reallocated to 75%. Uh, this is simply to help uh, with uh, citywide capital costs in order to maintain a balanced budget. Recreation remains at their full allocation. 
as I mentioned, on the public safety half cent, the drug court subsidy is fully funded in the general fund, so there, that 300000 uh, remains within the crime prevention fund. Local use tax still has some reallocation in, uh, of about a half a million from the affordable housing funds and two million in building demolition funds. So total there in, in the allocated, reallocated funds category is $3.9 million. <coughs> Page nine uh, talks a little bit more about our general fund revenue outlook. Uh, the earnings tax at 2.4% estimated increase would bring it to a total of $171.2 million. Again, this would uh, there, it's outperforming this year and this would put it within its uh, three to five year growth rate, uh, assuming growth continues. Property tax at $59.2 million, that would be a 1.5% increase. That's about in line with what we've been experiencing over the last several years. The sales tax at $54.6 million, again, that's only a 0.2% increase for next year. I've got an underlying growth assumption of about 2% in there, but, that, um, but deducting the impact from the RAMs, which is where you're going to see it, in, as, as well as in the license category, it, it, it produces a flat, nearly flat result by doing that. And so that's, uh, that's why that's 0.2. The payroll tax, uh, $39.6 million at 2.4%. Uh, got that at the same rate as the, uh, as the earnings tax. It's, it's payroll tax is not performing as well as the earnings tax, but this is within its range of 3 to 5% growth. Franchise utility taxes, 2.5% increase. Um, one, of the, one of the shortfalls we're seeing this year, particularly, is in natural gas, and that's predominantly because of the mild winter we had this year. I've got a, a some sort of about a 5% increase in uh, the coming year. That's heating degree, uh, cooling degree, no, it's heating degree days were down about 20, 20 over 20%. And so that was one of the uh, contributing factors to that decline this year. So I expect that to bounce a little bit up, uh, next year. Intergovernmental receipts, I've got that down at, at 26.3 million. That's down 2.5%. One of the increases we saw there this year was a, a, a one of a, one-time catch-up in prisoner housing reimbursements. That was about $7 million. Normally, we're down lower. Uh, I've got that going back to a normal level around $6 million next year. The license fee category of $13.9 million, down 9.3%. That is almost solely due to, this, uh, to the amusement tax receipts. Uh, we had budgeted 1.8. They came in at 1.6, and that's from uh, NFL football. So by just those disappearing, that, that, uh, that's where you're going to see the impact uh, on the amusement tax. Apartment fees and fines up at 2.1% at $49.6 million. And that's a, some slight increases anticipated in EMS collections as well as building permits. Now, in the other category, the $43.7 million, that increase is almost solely due to the 27 pay because it will be a transfer in, into general revenue. And you can see on the pie chart below, the earnings tax still remains about 33% of the money. I'll, I'll quickly go through these since I'm most, most on the expenditure page, on the, on the next page. Uh, you can see the changes on a percentage basis by each function of government. Uh, the non-departmental, you can see the 4.9% uh, decrease, and that's related to a lot of those debt changes, uh, both increases and decrease I discussed before. And on the, in the county offices, the 13.2% increase, uh, that's Board of Elections and the election costs. And then on public safety, that's a 5.5% increase that reflects the pay increases as well as the uh, most of the increases in fire pension costs. And, and so you can see the budget at 510.7% at $510.7 million is a 3.7% increase over the last year's budget. And again, a core increase is about 1.6% without the 27 pay. Public safety remains, if you look at the pie chart there, public safety remains 56% of the general fund budget. On the next slide, some of the highlights and special funds, uh, local use tax. It's down about 2.1% year to date, and it's tracking at about $29.5 million. The budget of $30.9 million includes a fund balance, but it's still down $1.8 million from last year. It continues the reallocation of a half million dollars in affordable housing funds, uh, and the affordable housing budget is still at $4.7 million with using, using existing fund balances. Building de demo funds are uh, reduced, uh, remain a reduced allocation of $1.5 million. The health department budget is $7.7 .7 million. The only really, the big change is the health department, you're going to see the two consolidated uh, health director's office and health commissioner's office have been put in one cost center, but not many changes other than that. Lead and building demo funds, uh, the lead fund uh, is, is 
pretty well funded uh, given the fee revenue that was uh, passed with, by ordinance a couple years ago. Bill, building demo and board up fund uh, will continue to receive $500,000 from, uh, from the use tax uh, to help stop those deficits they have had previously. And, but the neg there is still a negative fund balance in that fund of about $1.8 million. Gaming revenues, we've seen down nearly 6% through the third quarter. Uh, they have stabilized in the last few months. I've got them down. Uh, the, the overall budget is $7.1 million for the, the gaming budget. Uh, it's, a, it's down about 100000 and it also includes some fund balances in that fund. And the CNT fund uh, retains the funding for sister cities at 75000 and Grand Center at nine. The following page uh, details some of the allocations related to the capital fund. As I mentioned, the capital fund budget is $42.3 million. This is a de decrease of $1.5 million from the previous fiscal year. Ward capital funds are allocated 85% of the normal allocations. That's about a $1.4 million reduction. Uh, they meet the FY17 obligations, but the, it still doesn't cover a, a lot of our capital needs. Uh, I, I, and you can see uh, by the PAR chart, it uh, shows that you how those funds are distributed. A big category there is in our existing debt obligations of $19.9 million, and that's got everything in it from the current Justice Center to 1520 Market to uh, from our rolling stock leases and, and, uh, uh, and uh, the juvenile detention center debt. But that's fixed allocation, so those are things that we have to fund right off the bat. Uh, in other citywide capital amounts, we've got $1.9 million. That includes a million dollars for uh, re repair of um, the locking mechanisms and, and doors over the juvenile detention center, uh, a $150,000 increase for the uh, restroom repair at the Carnahan Courthouse, uh, and $529,000 for uh, addressing the um, uh, Emerald Ash War issue with the forestry. Um, in the ward improvement accounts, $8.4 million. It's a decline of $1.2 million from the previous fiscal year. It's got that reduced allocation from the half cent. However, it does include about a half million dollars in beginning fund balance because the sales tax has done a little better this year than originally estimated. Major parks and neighborhood parks uh, is budgeted at $8.2 million, and that includes about $3.3 million in debt service on existing debt obligations related to parks. The Recreation Center improvements of $600,000 or so is a full allocation of their half-cent revenues, as well as the beginning fund balance. And the Police Department improvements of $1.9 million, that's for all, uh, that's for all um, uh, allocated toward existing debt service agreements. On the next page, page 13, uh, it, it illustrates some of the changes in personnel. Uh, there's really not, uh, there, although there's some increases and decreases across departments, uh, in total there's not that much uh, in, in terms of personnel total changes. FY17 in the general fund, 5,042 position is down by eight. As I mentioned, the sheriff, city courts, rep views are all declines. Got a net increase in uh, circuit attorney by one. Uh, homeless, uh, the homeless services, uh, the human services is up by one. ESD is up by two. Uh, some special fund uh, categories are up by two positions. Grant funds are down by one, and enterprise funds are about uh, level. So that's overall total of 6,674 positions uh, down by seven. And you can see on, in that chart that public safety is the, by far the largest of those categories. 14 uh, just shows you the long-term trend in uh, personnel costs. We're down about 433 positions over the last 10 years. 245 of those in the general fund category. Page 15 is a update on where we stand. Uh, the last, actually, the next two pages are updated where we stand with our pension obligations. After the last two years, you, you recall our pension costs have gone down uh, a couple of years uh, following uh, pension reforms as well as some market improved market performance. FY17, we'll see a slight increase of about $2.9 million. That's mostly uh, related to the fire departments uh, or the fire pension systems increase of about $4.4 million. P uh, police pensions up $0.3 million. ERS is down $1.8 million. The next page, which has a lot of numbers on it, page 16 just gives you an update the status of the funding. Uh, some of the, and it just tells you what the uh, actuarial value and accrued liabilities are for each of the four systems we maintain. Uh, call your attention to the funded ratios there, the, the highlighted numbers. 
On an actuarial basis, employee retirement assistance is about 80.6%, but on a market basis, it's 76.2%. Uh, on the prior retirement, you've got 93.4% and 87.7% under the FRS, and 33.7% and 31.4% under FRP. And of course, that's to be expected when you have a new plan like that. And the police, uh, police retirement plan is uh, just under 80% funded, 79.9% and 76.8% uh, on a market basis. Our total uh, pension costs are $82.5 million in all funds, and that's about a $2.9 million increase on the current fiscal year. Finally, in summary, a total budget of $1,041,000,000. Million, $41.9 million. It's a 2.5% increase from the previous fiscal year. The general fund budget's up uh, at 510.7 million, is up 3.7%, uh, which is actually 1.6% if you adjust for the 27th pay. Bridges the budget gap uh, with uh, components including the 27th pay, uh, pay, pension, and benefit cost increases, uh, our fixed debt and other increases, as well as some $3.9 million in revenue reallocations, but resource funding in other areas. Uh, decrease of eight, there's a total decrease of eight general fund positions and decrease of seven positions in all funds. And while balanced, there, there's still some longer term budget challenges uh, remain. Uh, first of all, we're entering the eighth year of economic expansion, so that's long by historical standards, so something we have to keep in mind uh, when we look forward in terms of uh, uh, planning uh, budgets going forward. Yeah, we're attaining structural balance. Uh, where recurring revenues meet recurring expenditures, we're not quite there yet. We actually took some hits on uh, FY17 revenues, so uh, we're still struggling to do that. Continuing to restore reserves, we're currently at $14.4 million on a cash basis, which is just over half of our 5% target. Continuing pension reforms, uh, as you can see, some of our costs are still elevated, and, and that's something that should be on everyone's radar screen. And then financing of capital needs. Uh, we got a, a successful $25 million GO issue, uh, but that's uh, probably a fraction of what uh, was required out there, and so that's going to be something that we still need to be looking at. And that's the totality of the presentation. Okay. Members of DNA, have any questions, comments? Great job. Yeah, I, I want to thank you, Paul. I want to thank your entire team as well. These, these are not easy. Uh, this is not an easy thing to do every year to put the budget together. And, uh, and I think it's important that we remind ourselves of the challenges that we're faced with here. I mean, the fact that we we do have a, a good credit rating um, from Standard & Poor's as an A+, plus, and, um, and we do, it could be better, uh, we do pay our bills, we do balance our budget, uh, but that doesn't mean we, we have a ton of money to do everything we want to do with. You know, we we're always trying to figure out how we put the money where it's the most important and the most effective for the people that we represent. And those are always tough decisions to make, and uh, we know that um, we have we, we have so many capital needs that are available that, that we need. I mean, we're spending, what, $42 million, $42.3 million on capital. We probably have, we probably should be spending at least double that every year uh, on capital. And with the city our size, with the needs that we have, we can't do it. We, we, thank, thanks uh, to the voters, we got the $25 million uh, for some, you know, rolling stock and, and other, other things as well. But uh, it's not even near what we need. Uh, to, to do the things on a day-to-day -day basis. And we also had the study that was done by PFM recently that predicts that we will, that if, based on their predictions, looking at some, um, uh, I guess, trends that they, that they identified, they, they predicted that uh, all things being equal, our revenues uh, will fall $75 million short from our, uh, I mean, yeah, from the expenses, the increase in expenses over a 10-year 10 10 period of time. I don't know how accurate that is, but I mean, these are this is that's a very significant thing we have to keep in mind as we go forward. Uh, so these are we're always trying to make these decisions, and um, and I do you know so I want to thank the members of ENA as well as the, the staff members as well for pulling together and trying to figure out how we best um, you know put a budget together that's going to meet the needs of the people we represent and uh, and keep our uh, government running as efficiently and uh, effectively as possible. So that's tough stuff. So I just want to thank you and your team. I want to thank the other members of Board of uh, Best Enforcement and their, and their staff members. We're not done. We're, we're, uh, we've got the public hearing next week, uh, which is next Tuesday, I believe, at 10 o'clock. And uh, so between now and then, 
uh, there can be uh, more changes uh, if there's <coughs> something that you know, the other members you know think need to be addressed. Uh, and then of course it goes to the Board of Aldermen for a full uh, for hearings over a period of time and uh, with the ultimate objective of having a budget completed uh, by uh, July 31st. June 31st. I'm sorry, June 31st. Yeah, I, meant, I meant to say June. June 31st. So, uh, June 30th. June 30th. <laughs> <laughs> July has 31. Thank you so much. So, um, any uh, other questions or anything like that? I'll just say my uh, thank you to the uh, budget staff and budget director. Yeah. Thank you. Very good. So thank you so much, Paul. Really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next week, uh, if not before that. Right. <laughs> okay. Right. Thank, you. Great. thank you so thank much. You. And so what we'll do now is, yeah, we're going to adjourn. So what I'll do is, if there's nothing further to be brought before this body, I will entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. This means adjourned.